great. Here we are. Okay. Here we Wait, are. Is it in the mode you want? Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Thanks, Zach. Uh, Look at this beautiful shadow that we have on our cam on our blank canvas that we just stretched ourselves. We're ready to do our interdisciplinary research project based on our articles that we read by um, Ball and mm, Pantubaki. Pantubaki. And we noticed um, certainly the color that emerged for both of us was red. And we're so lucky that we Thanks, Zach. Lucky and also like a little bit weirded out by the fact that we have a colonial red to use. Yeah. Because because the oh, ball it's gone. Oh my god! Oh, well. Look at that. We'll come back. Because the ball article um, is all about colonialism. It's about. Um, Uh, sorry, I'm blanking right now. It's about the the French, uh, the, the war with France and Algeria, the Algerian War of Independence, and um, of course the war was an anti-colonial freedom fight on the part of the Algerians uh, with heinous acts of violence on both sides. Uh, over a million pe people died. Um, millions more were injured. And the, the uh, video installation that the Baal article analyzes uh, has a figure that appears in it, a red angel of yes. life or death. And what the article doesn't say, but must play into it, is the fact that the Algerian War of Independence, the, the first sort of military act that initiated the war was uh, the Toussaint Rouge happened on the day known as Toussaint Rouge, which is the Red Saints Day. Um, so that, with combined with the fact that the article talks about the Red Angel and the fact that we happened to find as one of the first colors we came across, colonial red, uh, made us decide that we wanted the ground for our painting, which is the base, the sort of the sort of color that sets the tone for the rest of the piece. Yeah. And um, part of the reason I think I um, intuitively started painting like this is because of the theme of death and blood and war in the in the art. Absolutely. And red was the color that I saw, too. We both saw red. Um, so we're using, essentially, um, on a symbolic level, we're using the topic as to provide the background, to provide the ground. So the topic. Also, the topic of the articles. Of the articles. Also, the um, Pantubaki article being about the Holocaust Obviously, red as a color of blood, as a symbolic of death. Also, we, that article evoked red for us also. So that's, again, we're using red to represent the topic and provide a ground. Or, or we took 
tell them what we're doing. Why? Oh, no. Well, that, this is you. So we are decided to do this painting as a as a collaborative interdisciplinary response to these um, to our articles. That's okay. Um, we were thinking, we talked about these articles and uh, talked about the similarities, talked about the, the research questions and problems and the methodologies. And we both come from art backgrounds. And you're always a theater artist and I'm a visual artist. And we thought, you know, this would be a truly interdisciplinary project if we could think about a way that we could represent these articles or, or think about these articles from the the lens of of researchers because we're both researchers in the fair program, but but also as artists. And we thought, wow, what a what a there's no better way than than to do a project that is interdisciplinary in nature as we as we discuss the articles. So what we've done is we've had long conversations about the articles, examining them and thinking about them and talking about them from an interdisciplinary perspective and decided that we're, um, that mostly what's, what's driving the, the research part of this or the interdisciplinary contemporary learning part of this is this notion that, that interdisciplinary research is very iterative and that um, it, it changes as you go. So we originally came to the table with plans for what colors represented to us and also what kinds of lines represented us, and then we decided that, that, that what would be more fitting for interdisciplinary research was if we had the conversation in, in front of the camera, was that if we talked about colors and lines and what we were doing and decisions that we were making in front of the camera would be um, more in tune or more aligned with, with what we think of when we think of contemporary learning and contemporary research and interdisciplinary research. So we're going to have, uh, the setup for this is that we're going to have conversations about colors for the video and then we're, we've, um, and then we're going to just paint without talking and we're going to be timing ourselves. So we decided on this colonial red Um, a dialogue about other other color choices and maybe the way the application of, of the paint, right? Yeah, and uh, um, what I would add is that we decisively figure that the product that we're creating that represents the analysis that we're doing is not the painting. It's the video. Right. That's the product. The painting is an artifact that is part of the process. But the video is the product. The video, because it's capturing the whole process, the, the conversation, the choices, the critique, and the work. This um, is going on the ground. Okay. But the painting is an artifact. The painting is a byproduct. The video is the product. Love. Yes. Wait, hold on. I have to turn this around. And I have to stop it. Yeah. 